Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Well, let's just get started. This is Attorney Antonio Moore having a discussion today about Jonathan Majors and what's going on with him. I'm going to contextualize it against what, what we saw with Nate Parker. I know there's significantly different uh, incidents that they were both accused of, but I, I want to just frame the, the arc of what I saw Nate Parker's career do afterwards. I'm not here to support Majors because I don't know enough facts. I'm just here to lay out the truth of things beyond anecdotal experiences because I think people get lost in that and make arguments that don't make any sense. Um, I want to talk about FMPV, MFPV, and how if you don't know what those two acronyms mean, maybe you don't even understand this discussion, whether you're a woman or a man. Let's talk about it. So we got Jonathan Majors in here. First of all, so we got uh, people all across the country in the chat ready to have this discussion about Jonathan Majors for those people that don't know who Mr. Majors is. So for those people in the chat that don't know who Mr. Majors is, he, he's a, he's a actor who has recently caught some success and he's starring in Creed alongside Michael B. Jordan. And he also starred in Ant-Man as the villain, and they were setting him up to be the next Thanos for multiple major Marvel movies. He was in Loki series as well. And there was an accusation that, to my knowledge, you know, basically cursory awareness based on reading the media, it was recanted about some abuse that happened. And I kind of wanted to have this discussion again, not to defend Jonathan Majors, because I don't know him and I don't know enough about what happened to defend him but both to contextualize Jonathan Majors and what actually we know from the media and to give you guys a chance to call voice your opinions. And I would appreciate if you called and focused in on uh, abuse rather than who he dates as racially and all that, because that's just, that's your, the level of conversation stays so low amongst our people. That's not the discussion here. And I don't know how to help you miss that might be your own ego, conflating a discussion that ain't this discussion. And I'll talk about it in a second because you actually see when you look at, again, I said MFPV and FMPV to see if you even knew the topic line, because I think we give expertise. We say people are experts at children because they're a mother. That don't make you an expert. I'm just saying there's some bad mothers and bad fathers out here. We say people are experts at abuse because they're a woman that you might've never been abused. You don't even know what the terms are to talk about abuse, female, male partner violence male, female partner violence, unidirectional versus bidirectional. If you don't know those substantive terms, then I don't know how you see yourself as an expert where you can make anecdotal statements. I want to get into the, the data that we've seen and talk about how you might have it all wrong and how that might be affecting perception when it comes to majors. Let's talk about it. So Jonathan Majors is charged with three counts of assault. More details emerge. Rising star and Marvel Cinematic Universe standout Jonathan Majors has been charged with multiple misdemeanor of assault and harassment after being arrested over the weekend in a domestic abuse dispute. Per People, Majors was charged with three counts of third degree assault. This is in addition to second degree aggravated assault, I believe. I contextualize that against Nate Parker because I want to talk about how, you know, just the accusation, basically, in the context of mass incarceration of black males, Adolph's black males in particular, leads to a, a, a situation where you're guilty and then you have to prove you're innocent. And that's just not the law. I, I say that and I have to actually caveat it by saying I am a criminal defense attorney and I'm not his defense attorney, but maybe that is making me see it through that lens and I'm also a black male. But I don't think that people know the numbers. I don't think that people know this chart right here. I created this for the Griot some time ago. And what this chart shows is that this isn't a race issue or a gender issue in the way that we see it. It's a, it's actually reverse. So one of the highest incarceration rates we ever saw in recorded modern history was in Russia during Russia, was in Russia during, I believe, Stalin. And it was like 700 per 100,000. That's obscenely high. To give context today, and this is about five or seven years old now. I created this for the Grio. Black women are at 330 per 100,000. White women are at 129 per 100,000. One of the highest we saw ever recorded was during apartheid for uh, black males 
in South Africa at that time, and it was like eight or nine hundred per hundred thousand. Well, young black men, black men between the age of 20 to 39, back in 2010, had reached the level of nine thousand per hundred thousand. And that is the backdrop with which we see this and how accusations that if this was a white woman and she was in Marvel, I don't think she gets this blowback. I don't believe that she gets the pr presumption of being guilty and get all her stuff pulled. Maybe I'm wrong. Can I say it? Can we get to it? So is this man just guilty because of uh, accusation? It don't matter if it recant because we already think we know about abuse. Again, the number is 310-388-3499. I want to hear from you. I want to hear substantive discussion. You can use anecdotal experiences of your own personal experiences. I do not want to hear about who he dates right now. I want to get into a question about the impact of mass incarceration on the image of black men, no matter who they become in this, in this society. And I also want to talk about how we might not understand abuse and we talking about abuse and giving people expertise on abuse based on the gender when gender don't give you no expertise on abuse personal experience does or looking at deep, deep research by PhDs. Deep, deep research. So Jonathan Majors charged with three counts of assault more details emerge. Citing documents from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office police cite that Majors allegedly struck the victim without the face about the face with an open hand causing substantial pain and a laceration behind her ear additionally he allegedly grabbed her hand and neck causing bruising and substantial pain additionally a report from abc news notes that majors made the 911 call himself which police responded to the call was purportedly over concerns about his girlfriend whom he lives with in a penthouse apartment in the chelsea neighborhood after police arrived, the girlfriend told of officers they were in a taxi together after returning from a bar and that Major physically attacked her. Major uh, was then arrested after police noticed marks on the woman. Major's criminal defense lawyer stated that Major is provably innocent and expects charges to be dropped imminently due to multiple witnesses and written retractions from the victims. Again, we're talking about Jonathan Major's from Creed 3 and from the new Marvel Ant-Man movie. And we're talking about him in context of Nate Parker. Because I don't know if you guys remember Nate Parker, Birth of a Nation, comes out about the sexual assault ac uh, accusation. And his career, it seemed like it just fell off the planet afterwards. I want you guys to understand, this is a timeline of Nate Parker's rape scandal and the damage control. So we, we remember that he had done Beyond the Lights and then he did Birth of a Nation and he produced it and i believe directed it and then after that this is his imdb since then he did a music video and he did one movie and that's it 310-388-3499 i want to hear from you about the implications of mass incarceration on how we view jonathan majors no matter if he went to prison or not no matter if he's guilty or not i want to hear from you about what you feel about abuse and you be, you better be like kind of like aware of the basic data of the, on, on abuse and not just be like speaking from you know pro feminism or or misogyny i need you to understand the topic because i think right now one of the th the dangers is we don't know the topic well enough but we speak and call it what's your name where you call it from hey this is rasheed calling from maryland hey rasheed let me read a little more to you and then i'm gonna get your opinion Jonathan Majors arraigned on several assault and harassment charges. This is CNN. Look, actor Jonathan Majors was arraigned on several assault and harassment charges Sunday, the Manhattan DA's office tells CNN. The complaint does not name the, the uh, female accuser, but claims the defendant did strike her about the face with an open hand, causing substantial pain and a laceration behind her ear. Majors' attorney told CNN Sunday there are two written statements from the women recounting these allegations adding that they are presenting evidence to the DA, including video footage from the vehicle where the episode took place, witness testimony from the driver and others who both saw and heard the episode. Attorney Priya Chaduri expects the charge to be dropped. Give me your take on this. Trying to use it as a base of like, uh, you 
lie, I would definitely suggest that, um, you know, everybody, when moments get heated in your personal lives and relationships. Uh, yeah, and so what I'm seeing is so that, I, is I'm that thinking. what I'm seeing is that, is that a lot of people don't understand the topic. They've been talking from, uh, particularly from a feminist perspective, and they don't know the numbers. Like, let's talk about the numbers for a second, because I think it gives context and we'll come back to majors and the impact. There's a study that I've used before. I used it to kind of deal with uh, Kimberly Crenshaw and some of the things she said. Because when you go back to her original paper, to me, it has far too little data to make the uh, assumptions that she made. But nonetheless, I, I used this in a, in a show before, but it has implications now. And in this study, they took like 50 other like data sources and studies and made a, a kind of a master study. And what they found is this. Listen, rates of bidirectional versus unidirectional intimate partner violence. And when we're talking about bidirectional versus unidirectional, it's very important because unidirectional is me just hitting you or you just hitting me. Bidirectional is us fighting. Now, I think for a lot of people, they confuse the two and how important it is to be able to understand the difference. If you hit me with a vase and then I punch you, we you, we bidirectionally fight. You can't run outside and talk about it unidirectionally on, on the internet or let alone to the police. One hotly debated topic within the field of intimate partner violence is the degree to which IPV can be understood as primarily a unidirectional versus a bidirectional phenomena. This is again, several professors that, that put this together. You can pull it up yourself. It is on the uh it is on the internet i shared it on my twitter so you can read the whole report however researchers increasingly hold on hold on one second early studies of ipv predominantly focused on men's perpetration of violence while women's involvement and our participation in ipv has been largely neglected now what i found and i'm gonna i'm gonna summarize a little bit is that much of women's participation doesn't show up in the police reports because of the over mass incarceration of black men in particular in our relationships. So the police come and they take a hint. So we didn't know that they both were just fighting. And also black men don't report when they get spat on or get hit with a vase or get a shoot thrown at them. All of that is, is a crime. So you end up with a reality where these numbers down here and these numbers right here come out of us not understanding how common it is and how even it is to be violent against each other. We're having a discussion not just about Jonathan Majors. We're having a discussion about Jonathan Majors, but in context of the numbers. Because I'm going to come back to Jonathan. Are you still there, Caller? Yeah, I'm still there. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to read something to you, and I'm going to let you speak on it. However, researchers have increasingly challenged this notion, and studies have found that women can and do perpetrate violence at a similar or higher rates than men, Archer 2000. Such findings have led to a gender symmetry versus asymmetry debate. Resolution of this debate has, has important prevention and intervention implications. In the current study, a comprehensive review of the literature was conducted in 50 studies, 48 empirical, uh, one book chapter, one meta-analysis that reported rates of bidirectional versus unidirectional violence were uncovered using a variety of search engines and key terms. Included studies were published in 1990 or later, appeared in peer-reviewed journals, and contained empirical data. These studies were then categorized by nature and sample. So this is comprehensive. So we're going to have this discussion come back to Jonathan Majors. If you call in, you better be on your cues. According to the results presented in the manuscript that corresponds with this online table, among population samples, the average weighted rate, weighted rate of IPV reported was 16.3%. Using weighted average among those reporting IPV, I mean, intimate partner violence, was 57.9% of the IPV reported. Of the IPV reported was bidirectional, so majority was bidirectional. Of the remaining 42% that was reported as unidirectional IPV, 13% was male to female partner violence while 28.3% was female to male partner violence. And the ratio of unidirectional female to male partner violence to male to female partner violence was two, was two among, meaning two to one, I think, among community samples. The average weighted rate of IPV reported was 47%. Now listen to this, significantly different ratios of female to male partner violence 
to male to female partner violence were also obtained across the ethnic groups, such that the ratio was 2.2 for black reporters, 2.2 for white reporters, and 1.3 for Hispanic reporters. However, it must be noted, hold on. However, it must be noted that these ratios differ dramatically from those reported when the sample is drawn from the military. It goes to 0.61. So let me tell you what that means. The expansive review of 50 studies shows one, when you move beyond police reports to interviews, female male partner violence is two times higher than male female partner violence, other than with the military. There's no, and two, there's no variation between whites and blacks. But there is a variation when you add in Latinos who go down near the military. You can give me your take on all of this. I know it's a lot, but I'm saying this so we can get a, a real discussion going because it's a lot of people talking from Lifetime channels. Go ahead. Well, I think it's important to just say, you know, um, what happens a lot in these situations is that temperatures flare, people get angry, um, and I mean, I commend the brother for recording the situation uh, so that way, you know, uh, no one can misconstrue or in the heat of passion say something that wasn't true. Um, I do that too. Uh, you know, everybody, every relationship has moments where you have to, you know, talk to each other, your tempers flare, you get mad at each other. I would definitely suggest that everybody, you know, don't take out your camera and put it in somebody's face and turn on the light or nothing. But just record the situation, you know, tell the other person, hey, I'm just recording so that way we won't calm down. Because just like with the police, when you start recording this, they act differently than when the cameras aren't rolling, right? So I think that as um, as a community, you know, we have a lot of issues with money and we have a lot of issues with being able to meet our basic necessities. Uh, that contributes to having very hard, um, you know, uh, outlooks of life and how we, uh, you know, treat each other. Uh, so I would definitely suggest, um, you know, that you, that, that everybody take just a second and look back at themselves and face themselves. You know, I've had situations where, you know, a bicycle was flying and I reacted, I overreacted um, to a situation that didn't require it. Um, you know, in this situation with this brother, uh, it was unfortunate that him and his, you know, his, his spouse, um, or girlfriend uh, had the situation, but it is important. It is important for all of us to see that um, a victim of, of, of okay. uh, spousal. Let, let, let me let me jump in here. Let me jump in here. Let me jump in here. I don't want people to think this is a misogynist aware discussion because it isn't. I'm just giving you the data, and when you look at the data, male female partner violence is two times less than female male partner violence, particularly when you add sp spitting, punching, kicking. It's just not reported to the police. And then when you tell it to the police, they don't care no way. So understand we both hit each other. I'm just saying that because maybe some people just don't know and they don't have the, the, the basic information to assess this topic. And then they give themselves credit for being an expert. And they're they they they're not an expert. They're worse than an expert. They're in under-informed. They're, they're inaccurate in everything that they say. I want to take another caller. Thank you so much for calling, man. Let's take another caller. I'm going to let everybody get in here. I wanted to frame this discussion around what we understand. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What's going on, Mr. Antonio? This is Christian Moses, Fayetteville, North Carolina. How you doing today? I'm good. Let me read the rest of this, and I'm going to come right to you. The Manhattan DA's office would not comment regarding the defense attorney's claims that women recanted. The NYPD deferred to the DA's office. Majors who recently started in Creed Three and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was arrested Saturday morning in an alleged domestic dispute. New York police told CNN over the weekend, Majors 33 was taken into custody following a 911 call. I understand that you're a younger brother. What's also crazy to me is we don't understand these people as young people. You know, if you're in your 40s, this man's 30-something, like young 30s. That don't give excuse for physical abuse. Let's let the facts come out. But if the facts are that he didn't do it, and we and now he might go the same way that we saw with Nate Parker as far as career-wise. I understand that they're different situations. We got to ask ourselves, can black men even be successful in America if we have this kind of incarceration? If we don't want to deal with the consequence that don't nobody else go to really go to jail and the jails are just for the black men. Go ahead, caller. Give me your take on it. No, you're absolutely right. I think what's interesting about this is that when you fold the data, you're showing that the, the, the rates among, among even different groups is, are virtually the same. So oh, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. No, no. I want to make sure that, and I'm not trying to correct you. No, it's twice as much for women 
white and black hitting men. It's twice as much. Like, I don't think that we understand how backwards we think of this. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just correcting that because it's, it's like, no. And the reason why we think of it backwards, I believe, I believe it's because of this. I believe it's because of this. We just don't well, see yeah. women as prisoners. Go ahead. No, I got you. No, what, what, I, what I, I guess maybe I can rephrase it, but what I meant was uh, as far as the different groups, not necessarily uh, between male and female, because obviously there's a huge disparity between that. But I think in terms of the, what the media does and then the way that it plays into incarceration rates by showing the, that there's an invested interest in the pathology of black men being violent. Yes. So there always has to be somebody that's propped up that looks like they are, you know, a, a, a violent person or someone that can't control their sexual urges, going back to Nate Parker. And, and, and even for me, just having done my own research, like in, in 2019, there is an FBI report showing that 70% of sexual assaults were committed by white men. But the ones that get shown, Bill Cosby got more time than Harvey Weinstein when that stuff came out. And, and, and I think it's, it's more about a vested interest that America has and not only destroying the economics of the ADOS community, but also destroying the image of the ADOS community. Because that public persona of us, it's not just about being like, this stops us from getting certain opportunities. This stops people from allowing us to even have the entity to even join our justice claim because they see us as just violent and uncontrollable. So, so that's, that's all I wanted to Yeah, and my, 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 my thing, and my, thank you so much, man. And my thing also is to say this. I ain't seen Jonathan Majors run no ADOS. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I got to ask Yvette or, or, or Ja'Cory, but I didn't see him pushing for no reparations. See, y'all worried about who he dating. I'm worried about his politics. Let me say that again. Y'all worried about who he dating. He can date who he want to if he show up at the ADOS meeting. That's just me. If he show up at the ADOS meeting and says, I want to support Yvette Carnell, I want to support Antonio Moore, I want to support Ja'Cory down, if he doing that, I don't care who he date. But now comes the question, if you ain't doing no ADOS politics, what you think gonna happen, bruh? You think you can be a loophole? Ain't no loopholes. I see the discussion and I want to frame the discussion that's part of the reason I got to the data. Again, we already went through it, but I'm going to go through it again because it's so imperative for the discussion. I pulled this study up. It's on my Twitter. Rates of bidirectional versus unidirectional intimate partner violence, IPV. Bidirectional, we fighting. Unidirectional, I'm hitting you or you hitting me. But when you looked at it, significant different ratios of female to male partner violence to male to female partner violence were also obtained across the ethnic group such that the ratio was 2.2 for black reporters, 2.2 for white reporters, and 1.3 for Hispanic reporters. So Hispanics have much more of the male to female partner violence, actually two times as much more. But the blacks actually have it reversed. And then when you get down, one of the differences that where you see it get really like much more male oriented is the people who come out of the military. Samples drawn from the military change the numbers exponentially. Which brings us to this. The army pulls the recruiting ads after Jonathan Major's arrest. How many people in the chat saw the uh, ad that he did? It was a beautiful ad for the, for the army. They had it running in theaters. They had it running at the... Uh, uh, and, the, uh, and the TV, they, they had it running. Army leaders were hopeful that the popularity of the star of the recently released Creed Three and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania would help them reach the youth audience. In a statement Sunday, the Army's Enterprise Marketing Office said the Army was aware of Major's arrest and was deeply concerned by the allegations. So they ain't waiting. They ain't hearing nothing about no recanting, no video. Army pulls recruiting ads after Jonathan Major's arrest. Seems like he's going the way of Nate Parker. Caller, what's your name? Hello? Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Troy. Call from Dallas. Give me a take on it, Troy. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I want to kind of follow in with what you were uh, just speaking about and what the last call of the And um, I feel like his characters over time, they've been painting him uh, to kind of fit into this media narrative. If you look at a lot of the roles that he's taken, they had no problem with uh, showing him uh, showing aggression towards women. So once this plays out in real life, you have a lot of women who are already visually scarred just from a media record, just from seeing him being aggressive towards women in, in uh, movies. And it's kind, of, it's kind of funny, the timing of everything, even a month ago before all these allegations came out, 
somebody who doesn't have to get their own particular vested interest at heart. You never know what if she's friends or what comes from that circle and this is all a big move to, you know, build you up just to break you down. So man, when when you look at this discussion, thank you so much for calling me. 310-388-3499. This isn't gonna be a long show, but we're gonna talk about this a bit. Well, you know, somebody asked, why are we talking about this? Because it's my channel. It's my channel, so I want to talk about this subject. Now, if you want to tune in and talk about Jonathan Majors and the context, now I'm not talking about a man as much as a man in the lens into what you might not know. You done already gave expertise to women because they women. You ain't asked this woman, you ever been abused? You ever seen somebody get abused? Oh, you just getting it from Lifetime, the channel. You ain't asked this woman, are, are you are you indoctrinated with, with, with bad information? Where are you getting your numbers from? So I'm having the discussion because I think a lot of people found him guilty already from the moment that he got accused. And I'm not saying he's guilty or he's not guilty. What I am saying is that the evidence is shaky and the consequence is becoming so large that you would think that he was just proven guilty of murder. So if black men can have their success stripped this easily, how are they going to be successful in a world that ain't got that much success to go around? No way. I wrote this piece some years ago, the black male incarceration problem is real and it's catastrophic. There may be more black men in college than in prison, but the truth still stands that there is a socially catastrophic number of black men behind bars. It shouldn't even be close. That's a stupid like data point that they use. That I have no idea, like there's 30% of white people in, in college. The ratio of a, in a functional society is 100 per 100,000, 70 per 100,000 in prison. Like, when you talk about, like, getting anywhere near that number, it's just the dumbest stuff because people don't know basics. It shouldn't be close. It doesn't matter if it's more or less. That's, like, that. it's, it's, the, most, it's the most ignorant point to bring up. To give a lens for viewing this data, I created this back in 2015. India is a country of 1.2 billion people. The country in total has only around 380,000 prisoners. In fact, there are more African-American men incarcerated in the U.S. than the total prison populations in India, Argentina, Canada, Lebanon, Japan, Germany, Finland, Israel, and England combined. It was seven, back in 2015, it was 745,000 men in jails and prisons, black men. And then there were 742,000 uh, women and men of all from all these countries in prison. And we wonder why all it takes is an accusation. Everybody know, though, sitting up watching Lifetime about somebody married in Utah and Atlanta, trying to use that to explain why you worried and dating. Stop watching Lifetime. Start plugging into some real time. Sitting up here watching this happen, and not asking, why has this man not been doing ADOS politics, if that's the case? And what does this mean for success? Meaning, can you be successful and protected without ADOS politics? I would argue you can't. You just waiting for this moment. Jonathan Majors has been arraigned on charges of harassment and assault. There is no one to protest for you, Jonathan. You better go call Ant-Man. Maybe maybe Michael B. Jordan. No, I ain't heard nothing from him. Whispers. At least that's what I see. There's a reason you invest in community. Can we talk about it? Some of these men need to reach out to Harry Belafonte instead of Lori Harvey. After Jonathan Majors was arraigned in New York City on Sunday on several charges that he assaulted and harassed a woman the previous day, Majors is currently starring in the films Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Let's take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, hey, Sean, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Let me read a little more to you. This is Juanita? Yes, it is. I know it. Juanita from Atlanta. Uh, in a statement, NPR Tuesday, Majors' defense attorney, Priya Chaudhry, claimed that the woman has taken back her allegations in a written statement and that Majors called 911 himself over her concern for mental health. Can I ask you a, a sec, uh, question, Juanita? I'm going to ask you if you you, yeah. you, you you listened to the data I gave earlier. I want you to answer to that. But more importantly, also, if you had a white woman that was in, uh, let's just say, 
a Marvel movie or a DC movie like Aquaman. And she got accused of just this level of one-time incident and the male recanted. Would it be a national story? No. Give me your opinion on it. You remember back in 74 when Al Green was uh, hit with a boiling pot of grits by his girlfriend? Uh, you know, I'm just using that's why, Go that's ahead. Why, I'm going to be honest with you. That's why she called grits on his ass because she knew she could get away from mm. Now, all of that what she did and why she did it, that's what she did because she knew she could get What did you think? Let me ask you this, Juanita. What did you think about, and I, I, I hope you got to hear it, when you looked at the numbers, how really like female male partner violence is higher than male female partner violence, but like don't nobody know. getting spit on yeah yeah and that's part of and that's part of what's interesting because also what's happening Juanita um and I say this as a professional as a, as a criminal defense attorney is is when the police come out the spitting punching and kicking that initiated incidents also also often doesn't get reported and also I think there's a different treatment if it's the male if, it, if you come out there and the man and the man got a punch on his face and laceration on his ear we going back inside. Now people can disagree, but I'm just telling you this is the way it go. Go ahead. Let me say this though. This is the interesting thing when you look at that. Though. I mean, it really depends on the top. But do you under, like? Let's slow that down. Let's slow that down for a second. She responded to a slap, and I, I wasn't there to see how hard. With a what can be deemed almost like attempt attempt murder, depending on where you hit somebody with a skillet. Like I just don't know if we're just barely going to jail, maybe getting out tomorrow well, I, if it's reversed. Hand. That's enough to send you across the 
roll in the wall and slide across the floor. So if you're gonna, if you think he's coming back for number two, okay, you're gonna see some Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm it's just saying. Right. Yeah. But the point remains, nobody should be hitting anybody. Nobody should be initiating violence. And yes. until it's consistently done like that across the board, you're going to have problems. That, that, that's all I'm saying. You so, know, if, 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 uh, if, he's trying, if he's trying to leave, he said, look, I don't want to talk to you no more. Don't put your hands on me no more. I'm trying to bleed out. I'm leaving. And he goes to try to leave. Then she jumps on his back, her neck, and shoulders up. And he slaps her. He's going to end up going to jail for domestic violence. To me, that's not fair. Yeah, and, and somebody in the chat, you have a whole fan base in the chat, Juanita. Juanita, you got a whole fan base in the chat. That scream your name, but somebody in the chat just said, "Keep your hands to yourself," and I totally agree with it. But I think that one of the things that I wanted to—if you do not want a man, this is from a woman with experience—if you do not want a man hitting you, you're not going to get that from a man. So let me ask you. Let me ask you one last question to focus it back on Jonathan Majors. Let me ask you. Let me ask you one last question. What do you think about the fact that if we were to presume that that the uh, attorney is represented correctly, these women recanted and that army pulled the ads and we're all taking it in? I'm talking about the next day, not weeks later, not months later. He's already been arrested. Are black men guilty before being innocent? Are they? They're not getting the innocence before guilt. Go ahead. say something to that Juanita. Yeah, and let me say let me say something to let me say something to that point Juanita let me say something to that point what I think also has happened is that we confuse individual experiences with a cultural norm like our race ADOS people don't have a cultural norm of, of male abuse and I, I think that my 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 and I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave it here but I'm gonna ask you on the way out what I'm perceiving is also happening is that there's a lot of younger black women in their 30s that may have never seen abuse that are actually watching lifetime and perpetuating a version of abuse that they didn't see their father do they didn't see their brother do they didn't see they uh they didn't they, they didn't experience themselves but they normalized it like it happens all the time and what happens is that instead of looking at this through the lens of a young man whose career might be taken away as a result of they look at it through salacious news. And, they, and what do you think about that? Like that people are not experiencing this, but basically kind of falsifying their visual on it. Well, yeah, I see a few that's salacious news, and I, and I think, you know, it's just like anything else. Uh, there's going to be some people that's going to get it out of hand. Let me say this. I, I got a 
Well, I got a full cue. I appreciate you calling in and dropping all that knowledge. Thank you, oh, Juanita. I, I, just, I just want to say one more thing. Go ahead. I just want to say one more thing. Even if he thinks this, it's correct. Because he's not going to be the same. Even if he thinks this, it's correct. Because he's not going to be the same. And this is just this is just wrong. And you're right. It does go into male incarceration and 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 all all of that stuff. But even older than that, you know what it it reminds me of? It's when those white women used to lie on black men and get them lynched. And everybody you. believed that woman and then you know, they found out, oh she he didn't do that. It was too late, his life was gone. Gone or ruined or whatever. And it's the same mentality only it's played out differently now. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, it's played out differently because it cannot it can not, not be a white woman, it can just be a woman. You know, in child support, you get that accusation of DV, it leans towards your favor getting getting to the children. So if you can initiate some violence, you in a better place in child support court. Now, I'm not saying that people are doing that, but I'm saying that people are possibly doing that. Can we talk about it? Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your what's your take on it? Yeah, my name, yeah, my name's Chris from uh, Atlanta. And my take on it is like immediately when this happened, my first take was that there seems to be a pattern where um, especially for actors and actresses where they're built up in the eye in the public eye just to be torn down. And there just seems to be this meteoric rise for Johnny the Major, where everybody's talking about him, only for him to be somewhat embarrassed. And I'm glad you brought that up about Dave uh, Parker, because the same thing happened with him. Uh, so, you know, that that was my first takeaway from it. Okay. And I think you all just talked about the relationship to how people, a lot of people, see these things. For turning on television, for taking on lifestyle, and create these narratives that really don't exist. So I appreciate you for bringing those up, as I've experienced that in my uh, own personal life. And have to say, question. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I got a full cue. I'm. A, I want to end the show. And um, thank you for calling. I'm gonna take one last caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is uh, Desmond from New York City. Hey, Desmond, let me read something to you and give your get your opinion. So now the question is, what is Disney going to do? Because for all those people that don't know, they were setting majors up to be the major villain for their next set of multiple movies. And it started with Loki and moved into Ant-Man. And he was playing this character. And this character actually is multiple versions of the same character. So it was a major investment on the behalf of Disney. Well, this is an article that goes into it. Here's the facts. The Red Hot actor... Uh, played Kang the Conqueror in Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. The Batty in Creed 3 and the build, uh, Bodybuilder in Searchlight's magazine drinks was arrested on Monday morning of March 25th on accusations of assault, strangulation, and harassment after reported altercation with the woman. Disney's situation is familiar to Warner Brothers Pictures as the lead of DC The Flash, critically acclaimed actor Ezra Miller, also represents a comic book cinematic universe meets PR nightmare. One key difference is to, is to date Major's maintains his innocence. Miller, who uses they, them pronouns, announced they were seeking treatment for a mental health concern in August 2022 following multiple arrests. They pled guilty to trespassing in uh, January 23. So basically, there's a white man that's playing Flash that has been running around, doing all kinds of things, but he actually got found guilty. But he's still in his major movie. And, and it hasn't been the discussion that I see instantaneously happen with Jonathan Majors. And part of the reason I wanted to add this show was to ask the question of why was there an instant presumption of guilt? Because that's what I felt I, I seen. Give me your take on it. All right. Well, first of all, uh, con this is full confidence. I run a blurred podcast, so we all we all in on this this cultural thing. I'm very well versed in Marvel and all that kind of thing. Okay. The, the issue really is um, we we have to pay close attention to how these certain protected groups are superimposed over other protected groups. And the black male has consistently, maybe for since 1619, been on the lower rung. So we, we, we're finally starting to see, you know, we can critique the manosphere or the black manosphere. We can critique black men's media. 
but it is solely needed because you clearly see that even with our own women, you know, we're not we're not communal like we were maybe in the in the fifties or sixties because uh, when you brought up Nate Parker, if you remember when Nate Parker was doing his film on Nat Turner, that his co- his his co star was Gabrielle Union and what he was going through his his issues with a twenty plus year old claim where he where that was where he was that was dismissed. She came in and was riding along with white villains because she was a rape victim uh, in her past. So her the idea of, of Karens and, and black men was unknown to her. So sometimes our, our, our own women lean in on, on uh, feminism with, with white, talking, white female talking points to the detriment of black men, even though uh, Carol, Carolyn Bryant from Emmett Till was, was a proto-Karen. So we, we have to have a serious conversation about black, black men specifically and how, and how we are treated in society and how that, that, that um, lack of credibility is just, it's just it, it's glued to us. Can I say something, though? No one can, can, I add, our, can I add something? This is where it does come in what was brought up earlier. I don't have nothing wrong with you dating who you want to date. But I do have a problem if you date dating other people to avoid dating black women. And where I'm coming to, to this discussion, because this is a necessary part, is have you been, you, Jonathan Majors, been part of Adolf's black politics? Because this is the moment you need people to come out and spend picket for you. This is the moment that you need to call on those people who know you to speak to your character. Well, you got me doing a show for you, and I don't know you. So I ain't going to say nothing about knowing you. But you thought that you don't need me. You just need Steven Spielberg. Where's Steven Spielberg at, though? And I'm using that figuratively, not actually Spielberg, but some version of Spielberg. I'm saying that Black people have to understand you are not successful without the rest of Black folks because they're going to come for you. Go ahead. Um, some of these, these fast track black stars. Come on. They don't seem to have a black circle, a black professional circle. Woo! Right? It is, it's a given. It's a given. Matter of fact, I have to commend you. If I know, if I know correctly, did you do a story on on a Ciara and Russell Wilson? And when they when they chose a PR firm, they took a picture of themselves with the PR firm. It was like flies and milk. I may have. I think a better example. I think a better example is Byron. Byron ain't had nobody on them steps. We did. I told people to go to the steps for the Supreme Court case for 1866. I wasn't worried about one man. I was worried about a law. You a billionaire. You're supposed to have people there, bro. What you been doing with all this money? So they don't be having a circle where like they've invested and created community for the community to say, I know this person. And it's th- it's all of them. Go ahead. Thank you. 
person. I'm not saying he is or isn't. That somebody's going to tell him, no, you shouldn't do that. He's going to be dissuaded from dealing with black people. So uh, I, I hope can I can I can I add, can I add one thing? Can I add can I add one thing to that? Sure, sure, sure. When I brought a defamation suit against Harvard, I hired a black attorney. Let's look close at who he hired. This name don't look black. No, it's Priya Chajari. Sounds like an Indian attorney. Now, I don't have nothing against who you decide to hire, but why aren't you hiring a black attorney, Mr. Majors? I'm just bringing this to, to the head so we can actually see it in application. I believe he should have had a black attorney. Preferably, I think for this case, a black female attorney, but a black attorney. What we've done is we've made it so where are black people supposed to go if they can't be hired for this case? Oh, okay. This is where we're going to do it. Well, go ahead. What? Well, well, let me say this. If you're going to really be honest, and I know this is what you and uh, Ms. Carnell, which, which you do, um, a, a, great, a great sliver or a great slice of black entertainment, black corporatized entertainment, is so low, low black self esteem, so uh, anti black, the entertainment pop culture space. In, in, in general, their pockets, but in general, that you're, going, you're going to constantly see this kind of low grade um, lack of con lack of consciousness, or consciousness is not allowable in these spaces. And until you start to see what's happening on social media, where they're pushed, because everybody else, their protected club appears to get their pound of flesh, except. Black I think we lost you, man. We lost you. Your phone dropped. Great discussion, man. Great talk. I think we lost him. He was he was bringing it. He brought the fire. He allowed us to to expound on the discussion, to have a larger discussion. And what I want to do is just finish out and read because Disney gonna have to figure this out. Disney also owns Searchlight, which ho hopes to highlight Sundance acquisition magazine dream that's where i guess major plays the bodybuilder as an awards contender this winter it desperately wants to avoid any callback to 2016 when searchlight was still fox searchlight and it brought out another sundance hit the birth of a nation it was directed produced by uh and starred nate, nate parker but the world learned that in 99 he faced a rape allegation he was acquitted in 01 uh, parker's accuser committed suicide in 12. the scenario pr proved that bad publicity very much exists the question becomes is it is that if it's a black male, it's all publicity going to be bad because all it takes is just a little bit of something. Where is the equity? Where is the pushback to say when corporations aren't doing their job to push back on society to create parity? Because if you look, and this is different than Parker's situation, because this is one where if, if the letters are there, that the attorneys are claiming, and there's a recanting the day of, like, where is the company to actually stand on his behalf? You decide to use him for your multi-million dollar project, but then where's his investment in the community so the community can stand next to him? It's all backwards. So we have fake success. That's what we got. We got an actor who stood, it looks like, on white community and made it look like he was part of black community during the promotions for Creed, and then now it's time for him to actually get some support, and he ain't got no community to stand next to him. Uh, what's going on? I want to talk about it. I wanted to have the discussion because I'm looking at this thing and we don't know the, the information. Go look at this study, rates of bidirectional versus unidirectional intimate partner violence. We don't know the incarceration rates nor the consequences. And we don't understand who Jonathan Majors is, in part because of his own fault. You can't just come out when the Creed movie come out. I need you out when we push in for reparations. When we push him for black politics, I need you out way before the Creed movie. This is Tone Talks. Please go to tonetalks.net, subscribe, donate, share this video. We're looking to have this discussion because nobody is having it the way we're having it here on Tone Talks. Thank you.